Hey everybody, we're back for another video on the series of uh, home electrical systems. This is video number four. We're still talking about 110 volt AC systems. Uh, we're, we're also going to incorporate today uh, 220, yeah. 220, or it could be called 240 volt AC. We're going to talk about breakers, panels, and fuses. In the last video, I drew a real simple uh, schematic showing a switch, if you recall. And that switch um, was operating a light. Okay, I'm drawing this as a coil. This is a coil. Um, but let's say we're going to, uh, this time, instead of having a coil, let's draw a motor. Okay, this could be a motor. And this might be your your fan on your above your stove. Okay, maybe your fans or something like that. Okay, so we, again we have the hot and we have the neutral. Okay, which is the white wire and the black wire. Okay. Now every circuit should be fused. Has to be fused. The NEC says that every circuit needs to be fused. So what uh, we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw a fuse in here. You always fuse this on the hot side, okay? The fuse symbol is going to look like this. It can be shown either like that. It can also be shown as something like this. It can also be shown like this, but in reverse. It should be down, up, and over, okay? Okay, so there's some couple different ways that you can see uh, fuses. And we'll get into more uh, advanced fuses like time delays and certain amperages and resettable breakers and things like that. But uh, basically, this is, uh, this is just for fuses, okay? Um, and that's what, uh, that's what some way we need to thermal, or not thermal, we need to uh, uh, over amperage protect the circuit. Because if this fuse wasn't here and you had a super high spike in voltage, like uh, a lightning strike or, a, or a, not a brownout but a, a surge, you, put, you, you run the risk of, of burning out your motor. Or let's say something electrical happens inside of this motor and then in turn draws more amps than it's supposed to. Remember, we were talking about plug switches supposed to be a 20 amp circuit, okay? But let's say you plugged your refrigerator in and something happened to the compressor and it shorted out or something happened and it just the wires just touched, which basically means when it shorted out, it went directly from here to here with no load in between. And that power, it would just it zap, the amperage, amperage would go through the roof. But because we have this fused uh, uh, protection in here, Bing, the fuse opens up or, you know, opens up like that and it and acts like a switch and nothing happens. The, the electricity can't go anymore until you go in and either change the fuse or reset the breaker, which would be located in the breaker panel. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully that made sense. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to draw out real quick an electrical panel. There are two different types. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when it switched over, but we're going to say somewhere in the 50s or 60s. 1950 to 1960, somewhere in there, they switched over from fuse boxes to breaker panels. And most everybody has this, unless you have an old home that hasn't been updated yet. Okay, so real quick, on a fuse panel, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a fuse panel, but um, what you're going to see in a fuse panel is these square boxes with some type of handle, okay, that's hinged, and you grab that and you pull it out, and, and behind there would be located a couple of fuses that you would pull out, okay? Fuse, long fuses like this. And then the other style that you would see is a bunch of fuses that screw in and they have the same um, 
the same pattern on them as as a uh, um, as a light bulb. Okay, so you may see a, a pile of these, and you'll see some you know some of these. These are 220 because they have two lines. Okay, there's two fuses in each one of these, and then these are single uh, single uh, for for 110 volt. Okay, so now we're going to get into the breaker panel. <clears throat> Let me get rid of this fuse box out of the way. That's kind of a waste of time. If uh, if anybody has a fuse box and they're having an issue with it and they want to discuss it, uh, we can get into that. But if you have uh, if you have fuses, uh, you probably have a thing called knob. Oops, K N O B. K N O knob and tube. If you've got knob and tube, I feel sorry for you, but uh, we can discuss it if you need to. Okay, let's get rid of this and let's get onto the breaker panel. Now, to discuss the breaker panel so you understand it fully, let's go ahead and go all the way back to the telephone pole where the power comes in at. Okay, here's your telephone pole and you have a transformer connected here, okay? And what comes off of, I'm not going to get into this section, but what comes into your house is not one not two, but three wires, okay? One wire is going to carry 110 volts AC. That's called L1, or line 1. The other line is going to be 110 volts as well, and that's going to be called L2, or line 2. So we have line 1 and line 2. This third wire is your ground wire, okay? Now, when it comes into the breaker panel, your breaker panel is probably in a closet somewhere. Oops, I drew that a little big. It's either in a closet, maybe in your basement, maybe, uh, you know. The way to tell is find out where the lines are coming in the house, unless you have underground. And there's so many variables to all this. But anyway, okay, so so we got the three three wires coming in. They're all entering in here, and to draw this so everybody can understand it, we have this one and this one and then you got a ground bar. Now all of these boxes are going to be, you have you have uh, Siemens, you have Square D, Homeline, uh, GE, Pushmatic, oh geez there's a gobs of different manufacturers so none of them all look exactly the same so let's just go ahead and, and, and I'm, I'm going to do a generalization of, of this, okay? Okay so your ground bar comes in, that your ground is going to come in and connect to a ground bar. Okay, I wish I had green to indicate uh, ground, but that's where that's going to be. It's, it could be across the top, it could be across the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's just get the ground out of it for a second so you can understand the difference between 110 and 220. Okay, now, in your breaker panel, you have what's called a bus bar. Okay, the bus bar is a solid rod that this wire connects to, and you have two of them. Now, this is going to come in here, and it's going to come here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Okay, and we'll connect this guy like so, and we'll connect this guy like so. Now you have two bus bars that are energized here, okay? Now, if you draw power off of one of these, let's say you install a breaker, which is going to, a breaker, uh, the face of it in your panel is going to look something like this. It's going to have a switch in it. It might have a square D. Um, some of them have a little window, so if it's tripped, it turns orange. But it's going to be basically uh, on, off, and there'll be a little switch there, so if it trips, it'll be in the off position, or tripped, and, and you flip it back on. So coming out of here, um, to run a 110 volt circuit, okay, you're going to draw off of one leg or the other. And if you need a 220 circuit, you're going to draw off of both legs. And the way they do that is they install a breaker that encompasses both legs. You see how they do that? So what this is going to look like, this, <clears throat> this breaker now is going to be double the size. It's going to have two switches, okay, 
and the switches are going to be connected either here or here and they they will turn on and off together so what you'll end up with is is uh, is is a line coming off of L1 L1 and then you'll have a line coming off of this one here which will be L2 L2 I hope that makes sense. I hope the hope the artwork is good enough that you guys can understand that. Um, okay, so now we're dealing with with a 220 breaker, and we're dealing with higher voltage. Um, and 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 the other items that run in your house off of high voltage might be things like your uh, like your like your well pump, your air conditioner, your heat pump. Um, Maybe, maybe you have a uh, maybe you have a plug that looks like this, okay, in your garage. Okay, I I, I, I there's there's well I shouldn't have drawn I shouldn't have drew that out, but there's there's uh, um, there's range plugs and then there's dryer plugs. They all they have different plugs. We can get into those plugs maybe on the next video. Um, but things could be like like I said, your well could be 220, your dryer your oven or stove, um, your AC uh, or, or we'll call it heat pump. If, you, if your house has all electric baseboard heat, those are usually um, um, 220 as well. And, uh, and about the last thing it would be maybe a water heater. Okay. And now for all of these, um, excuse me, except for AC, all of these can be also gas. So your house may have gas, may not. So anyway, these are some of the items you might find running off of a 220 circuit. And each one is going to have a different, <coughs> a different amount of uh, amps it requires. So then you might see, you know, like a range is going to be like 50 amps, okay? And, uh, and that's what that would operate off of. Okay, so uh, rather than you know, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you the basics of the things you might see in your home, uh, and understand what uh, what to look for and what some of these things are. Okay, now I think I'm going to stop here on this video. Um, we pretty much covered the the 220. Um, I think uh, I think in its entirety, um, so that you guys can understand it and and what some of the things in your house might uh, might might use 220 or which appliances would use 220 again if you notice uh, um, lights and plugs you know operate off the 110 volts which is uh, you know don't draw that much amp amperage or, or power and some of the big things like water heater it takes a lot of juice to heat up water it takes a lot of juice to heat up your house or cool it down or cook your food or dry your clothes or pump your water <clears throat> all these require a lot more power in turn, that's why they run off of uh, 220. Uh, it's more efficient the higher the voltage is, and we'll get into that again. You know, the more detailed stuff later. But anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps you, and uh, we'll keep going on the series of uh, home electrical systems, um, and then and we'll keep moving on from there. So, if you like this video, if it helped you at all, please subscribe, rate the video, ask. Feel free to ask questions. Um, subsequently, I will uh, try to respond to every single question with an individual e uh, video. Uh, that corresponds with that question and try to uh, dissect it a little further in detail. So, uh, hope this helps. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.